to question 9 and this section is dealing with geometry and trigonometry and it says the circle below has center O and the points A, B, C and D lying on the circumference. A straight line passes through the points A and B. Angle C, B, D, you can identify that C, B, D is equal to 49 degrees and angle O, A, B, so you have O, A, B is equal to 37 degrees. Part 1. Write down the mathematical names of the straight lines BC and OA. So BC is joining one section of the circumference to a next section on the circumference. So the mathematical name for that, a line that joins any two points on the circumference, is a card. C-H-O-R-D. What about OA? OA is coming from, the, bear in mind that O is the center of the circle. And A is a point on the circumference. So it's running from the center of the circle to a point on the circumference. So the mathematical name of OA is a radius. So it connects any point on the circumference to the center of the circle. Now I've put the diagram on the right. But we move on to part 2 of the same question that says, Determine the values of each of the following angles. Show detailed work in where necessary. And give a reason to support your answer. Alright, so... The first thing we want is angle X. So let us go to the diagram. Notice angle X is in a triangle AOB. Now, there are several things we can say about this triangle. Now, the triangle is made up of two radii. So we have OB and we have OA, which means that these two sides are equal. And once two sides of a triangle are equal, the two base angles are equal. So it also means that OAB is equal to 37 degrees. All right, so we can see that. So we can say that OAB is equal to 37 degrees. Now, this is a triangle, and the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if this is 37, this is 37, to get X, we simply just need to add these two and subtract it from 180 degrees. So we can say that x is equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of 37 and 37. Or we could just say 37 times 2. So we can say that x is equal to, and of course you have a choice of putting this inside your calculator, or you can manually work it out. x is equal to 106 degrees. Don't forget, don't forget the degree sign. Now, what are the reasons? The first reason is that OAB is equal to 37 degrees because it is an isosceles triangle. That is the first reason. And of course, the second reason is that angles in a triangle add up to 180. Angle in triangle adds up to 180 degrees. So those are the two reasons. Now, part B is asking us to find angle Y. Now, angle Y can be found in triangle BDC. And what is unique about BD is that BD is the diameter of the circle. Angle C is formed at the circumference from the diameter. So that tells me that angle C here must be 90 degrees. Or we can say BCD. So we know for sure that BCD is equal to 90 degrees according to the theorem. We can also look at it in terms of Angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center because really and truly at the center around here would be 180. So this would automatically be 90. So there are two spin offs, or there are two ways to look at this theorem. But more profoundly, we're looking at the angle at the circumference formed from the diameter, all right? And that is 90 degrees. Now, since this is a triangle, let me put in a 90 degrees here. Since this is a triangle, all the angles add up to 180. We know one to be 49, we know one to be 90. So we can actually say that y is equal to 180 degrees minus 49 degrees plus 90 degrees. All right? You can put all this inside of your calculator. Remember to put the brackets in there if you wish to put everything inside of the calculator. It turns out that y is actually 41 degrees. And there are two reasons. All right? So reason one is the angle at the circumference formed from the diameter. Or we can say angle in a semicircle. Angle in semicircle. Form that the diameter. And you can also look at the fact that we got the 180 because it's also angles in a triangle. So angles in a triangle works as well. Angles in a triangle. All right?
Now move on to part B, it says the diagram below not drawn to scale shows the route of a ship cruising from Palm City P to Quayton Q and then to River Town R. The bearing of Q from P is 133 degrees, as you can see here. And bear in mind that bearing is measured from the north line. So right here going all the way from the north. It says that the angle PQR is 56 degrees. So PQR is 56 degrees. And the first part of the question is to calculate the value of angle W. All right, now normally when we're working with questions like these, we normally look for what we call alternate angles or we look for what we call Z angles. Now if you look here carefully, realize that we do have a Z angle right here. So we are saying that 133 degrees here would be equal to the sum of these two angles down here, which is 56 degrees plus W degrees. So we can actually say that W plus 56 is equal to 133. So W would be equal to 133 minus 56, which is equal to 77 degrees. So W is equal to 77 degrees. Now moving on to the next question, which is B part 2. He says determine the bearing of P from Q. So we want to find what is the bearing of P from Q. So it means I'm going to measure the angle away from Q. Now bear in mind that bearing is measured away from the north line and it's measured in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to want the bearing from here going all the way around to P. Now this is it. Since we know that the angle around here is 133 degrees, which would be 56 plus 77, and around here is a straight line, so we can say that this is 180 degrees. So the bearing here would have been 180 degrees plus 133 degrees, which would be this complete angle going all the way around from the north line to P. That turns out to be... 313 degrees. So the bearing of P from Q is 313 degrees. Now part 3 is asking us to calculate the distance RP. Now since this is not a right angle triangle, we know that the trigonometrical ratios wouldn't work, which means that we either have to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. But when do I use the sine rule? I use the sine rule when I have two sides and an angle and I want the next angle or we have two angle and a side and we want the next side. In this case, we know the length of two sides and we know one angle and we want the other side. So it means that I'm going to have to use the cosine rule. Now what does the cosine rule here say? It says that, and I'm going to call it C, so it's easier for you to remember. We can call here C, A, and B. So we can say that C square equal A square plus b square minus 2ab cosine of c. Now how does this work? Small c which is a side, the big angle c is the opposite. So if small c here is here, then angle c is opposite here. Now the two other sides which are a and b are the sides adjacent to angle c which is here. So all we need to do is really populate this formula. So I'm going to have c square equal a, which is, we call it 290, so we have 290 squared, plus 210 squared, minus 2 times 290, times 210, multiplied by the cosine of 56 degrees. And of course, you know, you can put all this inside your calculator one time. So C squared would be equal to 60,090.3. I will simply take the square root of both sides. So C is equal to 245.1. And of course, we need to state this in terms of PR. So therefore, PR equal 245.1. And we can't leave out the units, which is kilometers. And that's it.